All right, here we go. 7.1. An exponential function has the form y equals a times b to the x, where a is not equal to zero and the base, the only thing that's cut off is the e over there, okay? Where the base b is a positive number other than one. An exponential growth function, if a is greater than zero and b is greater than one, then, this is what goes in the spot here, y equals a times b to the x is an exponential growth function. The growth factor is the b value. Then we're going to talk um, in this lesson and, and the rest of the chapter and in the next chapter, we're going to talk about something called an asymptote. And an asymptote, in Algebra 2, we cannot formally define it until we get to calculus, okay? We have to use the definition of a limit to define asymptotes. But what I can tell you that I think will give us a good idea of what an asymptote is, is it's a line that a graph approaches more and more closely. So what I want to do is I want to make a connection to what we did yesterday or Friday, I guess, with our M&Ms, okay, and our cancer cells. We saw things like this when we plotted them, and if you remember, one of the questions in the packet was, will it ever touch the x-axis? And the answer was no, because we started with two cancer cells. It would never be zero. So, what I want to do, and we did not draw a curve through it, but this is never ever going to actually touch the x-axis. And the x-axis in this case is referred to as a horizontal asymptote. And it's, it's like it's a boundary for the graph. The graph will never touch it and never go below that horizontal line. So in that case, it's a horizontal asymptote. Okay. So let's look at example one. It says we want to graph y equals 2 to the x. So we're going to start with an xy table with a standard table of negative 2 to 2. So when in doubt, I would use negative 2 to 2. If you remember in the previous chapter when we did square roots, we had a domain issue, so we did 0, 1, 4, 9. And with our cube roots, we picked nice, perfect cubes for us. But usually it's just negative 2 to 2. So if I'm going to plug that in, I'm going to start with positive 2, and 2 to the 2 is 4, 2 to the 1 is 2, what's 2 to the 0 power? Two. It's 1, okay? Anything to the 0 power is 1. Now you're going to see why we reviewed exponents in chapter 6, okay? Another reason why we did. What's 2 to the negative 1? That's 1 over 2 to the first, or 1 half, okay? 2 to the negative 2 would be 1 over 2 squared, and that's 1 fourth. If you do not remember your negative exponent rules, come in at math study table. I'll help go over it again with you, but we've covered it, so now it's assumed one of our uh, concepts we know how to do. So now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a graph. And we're going to plot these points. So I have 2 comma 4, 1 comma 2, 0 1, negative 1 a half, negative 2 1 fourth. Now what's very, very important as you go to draw your curve, two things. <clears throat> One, Make sure it never touches the x-axis, unless we've shifted up or down. And two, make sure you have arrows at both ends of this curve. Now, when you graph, this is called an exponential function. Exponential functions have a horizontal asymptote. So what you're going to want to do is just a little bit below the x-axis, make a dashed line. And so from Algebra 1, we learned how to write an equation of a horizontal line. So you're going to write horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. 
It says include any intercepts. There is a y intercept at 0, 1, and there's no x intercept. Make sure on a quiz or a test or on your homework that if there is not an intercept, you indicate that it's not. Because if you don't write it down, that's going to tell me you don't know or you can't remember, okay? So make sure we do that. All right, so this is a general shape of an exponential growth curve. Remember what we wrote down? B to the x, if b is greater than 1, then it's growth. And what's interesting, if you look at your M&M packet, most of you got something like for that base, you know, when your calculator spit it out, what did it give you like for that a times b to the x? Do you guys remember? It had to have given you something bigger than 1 because it was a growth. Most of yours were around a 2 yeah, or something. Like 2, point. 2 point something. And it'll all be different based on your group. Okay? But that's pretty cool. All right, moving along. It says, note, the graph of a function y equals a times b to the x is a vertical stretch or shrink of the graph y equals b to the x. The y-intercept of the graph of y equals a times b to the x occurs at 0, comma, a instead of 0, comma, 1. So in letter A of example 2, it says graph y equals 1 half times 2 to the x. And letter B, I have a fraction in there. Fractions and decimals will do on our calculators. But this one, it's really a 2 to the x, so I can do this one by hand. So we'll do this one by hand, and then we'll do letter B on our calculator, so you can be comfortable with both methods. But do not rely heavily on your calculator. All right, so here we go. I'm, I always like to start with the 2 instead of negative, because then I follow the pattern, and then it makes more sense to me. So if I plug in a 2, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. I do the exponent first. Half of 4 is 2. I get 1 half times 2 to the first. Half of 2 is 1. 1 half of 2 to the 0. That's 1 half of 1. That's 1 half. 1 half times 2 to the negative 1. That's 1 half times 1 half. That's 1 fourth. 1 half times 2 to the negative 2. That's 1 half times 1 over 2 squared. That's 1 half times 1 fourth is 1 eighth. All right, now let's make a grid. So here's 2 comma 2, 1 comma 1, 0 1 half. Now you are estimating these, but remember it's not ever supposed to touch the x-axis. Draw your horizontal asymptote. And then it is assumed when you are asked to graph an exponential function that you will identify the x and y intercept and you'll state the horizontal asymptote. So the y-intercept is 0, 1 half. There's no x-intercept. And the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. I need to warn you, just because I've taught this for many, many years, if you write this down, I'm going to mark it wrong. What's wrong with HA equals 0? There's no HA on the graph, and that's not an equation of a line. That's just saying it's 0. 0 is a number. And what you mean is a horizontal line is, remember, H is like an upside down Y. And so it has to be Y equals something.
All right, any questions up to this point? Yeah. Um, is there horizontal asymptote? Asymptote. Is it always going to be y equals 0 for right now? No. Okay. No. In this lesson, we're, we'll move it. You know, and that's a really, really good question. I'm get, glad you asked that because it seemed like, hey, the first two, it's y equals 0. We'll just write that down. It's going to be different if you shift your graph up or you shift your graph down. Okay. Then it'll be different. Okay. All right, now let's go to our graphing calculators and let's go to our Y screen. Clear out anything you have in there. And let's enter letter B. It's negative. Now notice there's a parenthesis around the five halves, so make sure that negative's on the outside. Now, I don't know what I was doing last on my calculator, so let's do zoom six and put it back on the standard screen. And what do you notice about this graph? It's touching. It's upside down now, it, and it's not touching, okay? It's getting really, really close, but it really isn't touching it. But it's upside down. What in the equation made it go upside down? The negative sign, okay. All right, now, what we wanted to do with the calculator, though, is let the calculator give us the table. So you're going to press second and graph. Second graph produces the table for you. Okay? So let's make our XY table and fill in negative 2 to 2. All right, so we're going to plot these. Now you do need to estimate. But again, make sure it's not touching the x-axis. Now when it's upside down, make your dashed horizontal asymptote a little bit above the x-axis. The y-intercept is 0, negative 1. There's no x-intercept, and the horizontal asymptote is still the x-axis, y equals 0. Again, make sure you are identifying the intercepts, x and y, and a horizontal asymptote. Okay? Those are assumed parts of the graph. All right, any questions on the graphing? All right, translations. To graph a function of the form y equals a times b to the x minus h plus k, um, how many of you, I know that when we did our square roots and cube roots, the majority of you did one graph, right, instead of doing the two? Okay, I'm going to go with it that way. First period, everybody um, was doing it with one graph. So what's so neat about doing exponential functions is everything we've learned up to this point with parabolas, with an absolute value, which was the v-curve, um, or the v-graph, with your square roots, your cube roots, the left, right, up, down, flip, stretch, shrink them, it's all the same, okay? So let's look at example three. I want you to scratch out example or step one. This graph is right one and, and down, right one and down three. So instead of starting with the table at negative two, I'm going to start at negative one. And then we're just going to plug in and plot, okay? Now, our horizontal asymptote will change for the very first time, okay? So let's do this one. I get y equals 4 times 2 to the 3 minus 1 minus 3. This is 4 times 2 squared. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 minus 3 is 13.
go ahead and fill in the rest of your table. So that's four times two is eight minus three, I get five. That's two to the zero, so that's one. Four minus three is one. So that's four times one half, right? Four times one over two, that's two minus three is negative one. That's two to the negative two. That's four times one over two squared. That's one fourth, that's one minus three is negative two. You hit your table okay? That's kind of the hardest part there. Where's the negative two come from? What negative two? Oh, up here? Okay, you take negative one minus one, that's negative two. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, so looking at my values, I've got negatives and positives. I'm going to go by twos. So here's negative one, negative two, zero, negative one, 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 two, five, three, thirteen. Now what I like to do before I draw my curve, I always draw my horizontal asymptote before I'm going to connect the dots. Okay, because that gives me a boundary. Your horizontal asymptote is like a boundary. So what is the horizontal asymptote now? If my graph has been shifted down three units. Okay, be careful, it's y equals negative three, okay? Now, the y-intercept is easy to see. It's at zero, negative one. Do you notice that I actually have an x-intercept now? It's cro an x-intercept is where it's crossing the x-axis. It's not a whole number. So what I need you guys to do, can you guys focus with me at the board, and I need you guys to go to your y screen, and we're going to enter the function. 4 times 2 to the x minus 1 minus 3. Does anybody have an older TI-83? Okay, if you have the older calculator, be careful, I'm going to write it on the sideboard. In your Y1, after the caret, if you have a sum or difference or even a product in your exponent, you need a parenthesis around it on the TI-83, okay? All right, now, let's press graph because we were on Zoom 6. And what we're going for here is we're trying to find the x-intercept. And so you're going to have to use your calculator to do this. It's right here. So you're going to press second trace. We did this earlier in the year when we did quadratics, so we're just reviewing. And it's called the zero or the x-intercept, okay? That's number two. And it says left bound. So mine is to the left. You use your arrow key. Now you need to be a little bit to the right. And on the guess, you just press enter. And so the x-intercept, or the zero, zero is just another word for solution, or x-intercept, it's about 0.6. So it's like 0.6 comma zero. So on a quiz or a test, I'm expecting you to do your x and y intercepts and to know how to do it on your calculator. Okay? All right, any questions on this one? So. Horizontal asymptotes will shift when you move your graph up or down. And so your horizontal asymptote is always the y equals the k number, okay? All right, exponential growth models. When a real-life quantity increases by a fixed percent each year or other time period, the amount y of the quantity after t years can be modeled by the equation y equals a times the quantity 1 plus r to the t power. 
where A is the initial amount and R is the percent increase expressed as a decimal. So in example four, it says in 1992, 1,219 monk parakeets were observed in the U.S. For the next 11 years, about 12% more parakeets were observed each year. Write an exponential growth model that describes this situation. So here's our formula, and you do need to memorize this, okay? There's going to be two today you have to memorize. Y equals A times the quantity 1 plus R to the T power. A is the initial amount, R is the percent as a decimal. So the initial amount of parakeets was 1,219. The interest was 12%. Now, T is your time. So this is 1,219 times 1.12. And then they did say for 11 years. So you could plug in the 11. But it didn't ask us to compute it. It just said write an exponential growth model that describes this situation. What? <clears throat> Same equation you just had me memorize. Uh huh. Yes. Good, good catch. Good catch. Okay. Now, this one is very, very useful um, personally for uh, considering finances. It says compound interest, A equals P times the quantity, 1 plus R over N to the NT power. This is the one you need to memorize. P is the principal or initial amount. R is your interest rate as a decimal. And N is the number of times compounded per year. And T is the time in years. Let me just make sure that we're all okay. Um, if I said to you we were going to compound monthly, what would N be the number of times per year? 12. If I said to you quarterly, how many times a year is quarterly? Four. 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 If I said to you annually, how many times a year is annually? One. What if I said to you semi-annually? Twice. And what if I said to you daily? 365. These are assumed uh, numbers you would know. Example 5 says you deposit $4,000 in an account that pays 2.92% annual interest. Find the balance after three years if the interest is compounded quarterly and then daily. So what I strongly recommend that you do is copy the formula down with every problem. By the time you write it Six or seven times, you'll have it memorized. So, in letter A, the principal is 4,000. The interest rate, now converted to a decimal, is 0 0.0292. It's compounded quarterly, so N is 4, and this is for three years. Let me show you how to enter this on your calculators. Okay, so here we go. 4,000, 1 plus 0 0.0292 divided by 4. Again, if you have the TI-83, since you're going to need a product, put it in a parenthesis, but the rest of us, we don't need that. It's 4 times 3. And you're getting $4,364.82. Now watch this. In part B, okay, so let me write that one down. And then let me show you a really neat strategy in letter B. This is $4,000. The only thing that's changing is N. So watch what you can do on your calculators. You can actually press second enter and then go back through and change the four. You guys, you can do second insert and do 365 to delete the four. Okay, 
Okay, press second, delete, that's insert, and make it 365. Do you see that? Instead of retyping the whole thing. So I'm getting $4,366.19. So if you look at this and think about it, when you compound money more often, you get more money. Now, in three years, we only see less than $2 of an increase, right? But if you were to put your money away for, say, 30 years, then it would be a much, much bigger difference, okay? in the long term. <laughs>